Okay, thank you, uh, the organizer, for uh, inviting me to deliver a talk in this uh, congress. Um, I'm talk. Uh, I'm from uh, Federal University of São Carlos, and I uh, do research at the superconductive and magnetism group, the group that uh, Wilson is the leader. Uh, I'm going to talk. Ab about uh, the crossing field in thin films of uh, isotropic superconductor. This uh, work was done in collaboration with Vitaly Vlasko Vlasov, and the measurements were carried on at the Argonne National Laboratory. So I would like to start uh, talking, uh, showing uh, uh, how the uh, superconducting films behavior under a perpendicular, perpendicular magnetic field. So first, let's see uh, the magnet measurement uh, against uh, the magnet field. This is a logarithm scale to see these two threshold fields over here. So when we apply magnet field at some uh, threshold field, there are discontinuities. And these discontinuities are related to avalanches. So uh, then up, up to a uh, upper threshold field, uh, we uh, still have this avalanche, and then the curves start to be smooth again. So if this curve is for a uh, temperature of 4K for, um, for this niobium film, if you perform this measurement for different temperatures. And if we collect these two threshold fields, we uh, are able to uh, build this uh, temperature field, uh, field temperature diagram. And this, uh, so the lower threshold field is this line, and the upper threshold field is the this upper line. So in this green region of the diagram, we have uh, those discontinuities uh, at the uh, in the uh, measurements. And then using magneto optical image, we see uh, those avalanches over here. So when the same measurement is done in the this gray part of the diagram, so an isotherm is uh, uh, is carried uh, out, uh, increasing the field, this line. So what we see is a smooth penetration, and the, this image uh, shows an example how the superconducting film behavior. So uh, what I'm going to show is how the penetration change when we apply beyond this uh, out of plane field and in plane field. So the sample is field cooled under an in plane field and afterward we apply an out of plane field. So the sample uh, used in this uh, work was a myobium film grown on a silicon substrate using high vacuum DC magnetometry sputtering. And there is no features, special feature in this sample. It's a uh, plain and isotropic sub thin superconducting films. So we use two samples. One is a 200 meters uh, film, is square. Uh, with the side of 2.5 millimeters, and the TC is 9K. Uh, the second sample is 100 nanometers with 2 millimeter side, and the TC is 8.7. So uh, for the measurement, we used a uh, uh, magneto-optical setup. Uh, I'm going to talk a little about this uh, this technique. Uh, this technique is based on the Faraday effect when a polarized line passes through a uh, magnetized material, then we see this uh, uh, Faraday angle, uh, the rotation of uh, direction 
of electrical field. So to see this superconductor, we put on the sample uh, an indicator which has in-plane magnetization. And this uh, mounting, th th this, this sample and the indicator is mounted on a, a cryostat with optical windows. So then the, this, uh, uh, this figure here, we have uh, how the microscope is. So the light passed through a polarizer and shine where the sample is and then goes to an analyzer which is uh, crossed to the polarizer. So afterward we uh, see a, the image using a CCD camera. So when the, uh, this indicator has an in-plane magnetization, the light that passed through this polarizing and passed through this uh, indicator is reflected by a mirror and then pass to an analyzer. Uh, so if there is no field because of the sample in this indicator, uh, so the magnetization stay in the plane, so what we see is a dark image. But when we have a um, magnet field, so this magnetization gets uh, out of plane uh, component, so what we see is a bright field. So with dark and bright, uh, e uh, bright, dark and bright image, we can map the field on the sample, on the sample surfaces. So, uh, for to apply the, the crossing fields, uh, we use uh, first uh, uh, to perpendicular field. We use abrasive coils, and then we pass current around, and the field uh, applied perpendicular to uh, is applied perpendicular to the sample for uh in plane field we use a strong magnet and then we were able to apply a perpendicular uh in plane field like this is the uh field we apply is around 1 kilo earth so let me show first uh, uh how is the behavior of the sample without uh, uh, is all the in-plane field? So this is uh, a uh, no in-plane field. The temperature is six K. So for this out-of-plane field with twenty-eight oersted, we see the sample edge, and when we increase it even more, the sample we see the field penetration uh, from all the four edges. And uh, applied uh, up to the full penetration, uh, a, a field that uh, a field where we have full penetration, we see that the four domains of field uh, meets uh, at the meet at the center of the sample. And when we remove the sem the field, then we have this crossed bright line because of the current, the shielding current around the sample. I'm going to show the image, an, another, uh, another panel, the currents. So then when we have an in-plane field, this is what, uh, what uh, changes. So for uh, this small field of 28 uh, oersted, we see the edge of the sample and the deeper penetration when the field penetrates uh, along the in-plane field. And for a higher, uh, even um, a little higher field we have here, uh, 58 or so, the penetration is clearly deeper along the in-plane field. Then for a full penetration, we see this anisotropic uh, penetration of magnet field, and also when we uh, remove the uh, field. So then we can, uh, uh, when we go to the current around the sample, we see that this isotrope penetration, the current is the same in all these four domains. 
So, but when we have this anisotropic penetration, the, the current in the uh, x direction is lower than the current uh, along the y direction. So let's uh, see now how is the field penetration when we have the in-plane applied uh, through the diagonal. So uh, what we see there compared to this, no, this image with no in-plane field is that the field penetration the same amount along the uh, through the four edge, but we see also that the uh, this uh, penetration deviates a little bit from the uh, perpendicular uh, to this edge. So when we go to the full penetration, we see that the four domains uh, meet at the center of the sample as in the no in-plane field uh, uh, case because of the symmetry of penetration of magnetic fields. And then when we remove the uh, field, we still have these uh, four domains meeting right in the center, and we see uh, the anti-vortices uh, deviate from the uh, normal uh, direction uh, uh, the normal uh, direction to the edge of the sample. So let's see now how uh, uh, what happens when we have uh, uh, the sample is with temperature and field that occur as uh, flux avalanche. So for uh, for uh, this. Uh, no in-plane field, what we have is avalanche uh, uh, growing from all edge and the same amount of, of avalanche. So, and increasing the field and decreasing the field, we have uh, those avalanche too. But when we apply the perpendicular uh, uh, in-plane field, the avalanche uh, grows uh, more across this in-plane field. So when we see also uh, this behavior for a higher field. So now we can uh, uh, see how it happens when we have an in-plane field applied along the diagonal. Then we have here uh, the avalanche and this avalanche turn across this in-plane field. So to have an overview, the, this panel shows the measurement for a 5K. In this column, we have uh, uh, image for no in-plane field, and there, this other three, we have uh, image for uh, in-plane field in different directions. So uh, this uh, first line is for 33 worsted. We see that with no in-plane field, the avalanche grow with uh, uh, around the same uh, around the edge, but with in-plane field, the avalanche uh, grow uh, preferentially uh, perp uh, across the in-plane field. So at this temperature if we apply high enough field, the penetration start to become smooth, and then we see uh, clearly this anisotropy. So when we uh, measure a thin film of 100 nanometers, we don't see uh, this uh, anisotropy for uh, this same uh, in-plane field applied and for the uh, out of plane field written in blue in on the top so the the measurement show uh, the pictures uh, these figures shows the measurement for 3.6k 5k and 7k so no avalanche in all those cases so uh to uh 
we can explain this uh, anisotropy created by in-plane field uh, because of in-plane vortices. So if we go to this equation that it is in the Abrikaza book, we can calculate the uh, how is the HT1 for Naomi film with these values of uh, lambda A in chi. Psi. So for uh, 100 nanometers, the uh, HC1 is 1,200 orsted, and uh, for 200 nanometers is 600 orsted. So the one kilo orsted is uh, enough to uh, create uh, in-plane forces for this uh, uh, 200 nanometers film, but not for the 100 nanometers film. So we can uh, check if we have uh, uh, in-plane force looking to the Gibbs potential. So uh, this uh, figure over there, we have uh, the Gibbs potential against the Vortz uh, periodicity. So when the Vortz is far, then we have a high energy, and when these words get closer, the energy decrease. I'm talking about this blue uh, curve uh, for 200 nanometers. And then there is some position that the energy is uh, lower. If the distance of words get closer, then it start to be, uh, the energy start to be higher again. So there is some distance that energy is the minimal. But this doesn't happen for the 100 nanometers film. When we the vortex get closer, the energy only increase. So another uh, explanation for the uh, uh, anisotropy can be uh, seen by by uh, the tilted uh, of the uh, vortices that penetrate, the perpendicular vortices that penetrate uh, into the sample. So if you look at to this vortex shape using this equation, we have, we uh, can uh, build this uh, graph where we have here uh, the blue line, it is the vortex shape for uh, a thickness of uh, where d is 2 lambda. And the red one is the uh, result for a thickness of lambda. So we see that it's clear uh, that the uh, for the 2 uh, lambda uh, thickness, the uh, vortex two is more than the one the the lambda thickness. So when the vortex tilt means that uh, the probability to find defects when moved to the sample uh, is higher in one uh, direction compared to the other. Let's see this uh, picture in the center of this panel. So when the vortex move to this Y di uh, X direction, the area that it uh, sweeps is B times D, but when the vortex move to the Y direction, the, uh, the area is B times D divided by cosine of theta. When theta is this angle related to the horizontal. So this means that the area S2 is higher, is larger than the area S1. So the probability of uh, words find defects is uh, higher when you move to this Y direction. So summing up, we uh, show that the isotropic niobium film became anisotropic under application of in-plane field. And this anisotropy occurred due to frozen in in-plane vortices. And the smooth normal entry 
is preferential along the in-plane field, and the dendritic patterns of flux avalanche stretch preferentially across the in-plane field. Thank you very much.